This is a demonstration of topographic synthesis uh, for Beast Phase 2020 and I'm Eric Nyström from the Department of Music at City University of London. Uh, this uh, uh, research that I'm uh, talking about today was uh, undertaken uh, whilst I was a Levy Hulm uh, early career fellow at uh, Beast uh, at the University of Birmingham and um, uh, I'm going to show you some super collider tools that I created whilst composing in the Beast studios uh, and I also use these for performances in previous Beast feasts and the whole idea with this uh, presentation originally obviously was to make a multi-channel demonstration of this on the Beast um, system. Uh, this uh, video here uh, will hopefully give you enough to um, go and explore these tools on your own uh, despite the obvious uh, absence of a multi-channel system uh, if you decide to download them. <coughs> So the idea of uh, topography uh, and um, uh, topographic synthesis, uh, I should say as well, uh, I presented uh, this, uh, these tools at the ICMC paper in 2018. Um, and uh, when doing that presentation, I did not have uh, the ability to show sound examples um, so uh, this presentation is focusing more on that. Uh, but you can read that paper, it's online, ICMC 2018, uh, Topographic Synthesis, Parameter Distribution and Spatial Texture. That gives you a bit more context and discussion about, about what this uh, is about. Um, <clears throat> uh, so topography is articulated as a field of space rather than a point in space. It's about spatialized properties rather than spatialized sound. So it's a texture that's uh, distribute across a space, occupying multiple areas at the same time. Uh, I don't use any panning or anything. The spatial uh, motion is entirely a uh, consequence of differences and similarities between different channels. Um, so we're talking about shifting perspective or kind of elastic reshaping of, of textures, uh, spatial contours. Some related work to acknowledge um, is uh, Kerry Hagen, uh, textual composition, she calls it. Um, it has in common with my work that um, she uses mainly point source spatialization, i.e., uh, different each channel is generating its own sound. Um, and she's also uh, more interested in textures than uh, kind of gestural and uh, trajectorial kind of spatial material. <clears throat> Robert Normander's timbre spatialization is also uh, a kind of earlier uh, related approach uh, where, where you have different um, uh, timbres, somewhat different timbres in every channel, uh, adding up to a spatially distributed macro timbre. Uh, circumspectral space uh, uh, is a term that Dennis Smalley uses to describe. Uh, a spatially distributed spectrum. So all of these techniques are related to mine, um, but uh, my sort of way of working is uh, different. So topographic synthesis is about having um, uh, different instances of the same or similar synthesis process in every uh, speaker channel, and then uh, generating uh, Param structured parameter arrays basically for controlling these synthesis processes. Uh, so we have an example here of a kind of envelope, a simple curve, um, which is turned into an array. So each of these vertical lines here is a speaker channel, and uh, this is an example of an array. Um, and then that uh, an array of frequencies. So the beginning of the speaker array, whatever that is, could be uh, have a, any shape, um, whether it's a ring or a square or just a panoramic uh, straight array or something. Uh, beginning and the end has a different frequency, and this is then mapped onto uh, synthesis processes, mapped uh, placed in different channels in space. And this is here. This here is to illustrate that. Uh, each of these um, arrays uh, is kind of like a, 
snapshot in time. Uh, so we generate many of these and then interpolate, and then we get uh, spatially shifting the texture over time. Um, <clears throat> this is a little bit similar to uh, Xenarchis's idea of screens. It talks about informalized music, uh, which is sort of a snapshot in time um, of textural properties that are <clears throat> also somehow interpolated uh, among. Um, the method is uh, fairly simple. You generate, design a mono synth. So you're working just. Uh, the, the beauty of this is that you have a, a synth that is just mono, and then you could use that for any uh, uh, speaker system, any speaker system you like. You just plug in how many you need for the amount of channels. Um, uh, so you assign them different outputs, and then you generate parameter settings with these tools and that can be done through automated process or through performance uh, I use a combination of both I might have like one parameter of one of these uh, parameter uh, generating classes uh, mapped to a knob or something like that which allows me to get quite a lot of control over the space although I don't have uh, I have quite a lot of agency to, to affect the space uh, I don't have control of every aspect of it uh, because uh, I don't want that actually. I quite like the technology to have some agency as well. Um, but it's a form of spatial sound performance, uh, but equally uh, it can be used in algorithmic uh, processes. And I tend to use both in, a, in synergy in my work. Um, it's available on uh, GitHub Post Nature Parameter Distribution. Uh, that's where you can download it um, and it's a set of spatial envelopes and then some uh, kind of self-organizing non-linear processes uh, and it's all available also as uh, patterns um, super glider patterns uh, which are named uh, so awkwardly p param um, so p param peak p param peak warp etc um, just to quick run through the different uh, classes uh, objects so param peak param, param peak warp is two different ways of of uh, move, generating a peak in a in a speaker array you can also move this peak around if you create multiple instances of these arrays to create a kind of timbral panning uh, so you can actually create a, a sort of a, a wave that moves across multiple uh, as across a speaker array, um, uh, and a param curve is um, uh, what it uh, says in the name is simply a curve from one uh, point in space to another, uh, and uh, it's turned into an array. The curvature and the minimum and maximum is what makes the difference. Um, so uh, that's just showing what I showed before. Multiple of these will generate a sort of animation over time. Um, <clears throat> param lat pass, param field are uh, not possible to dis to demonstrate meaningfully in stereo. Uh, um, but basically, these are for pairwise and um, gridwise speaker layout. So I've used them, for example, in places where you have a grid in the ceiling of like four by five or something like that. Uh, I won't really have time to explain exactly how these work, but you can read that ICMC paper to get a bit more explanation. Uh, param deviation generates a stochastic, uh, like stochastic devi deviations of an input value that you can map to speaker array. Um, param feed feeds uh, channel value into the next channel and the previous iteration onto the current iteration so you actually get a process that evolves over time in a non-linear fashion and param cells uh, is a process where each speaker channel is like a cell that is affected by its neighbors uh, and uh, in a more or less um, random way or uh, param cell funk uh, is one that where you can actually supply your own function for how that relationship your own rules essentially um, for that <clears throat> uh, so uh, I'm just gonna go into the demonstration bit here uh, in super collider 
and um, I'm going to start by just having a quick look at the uh, uh, param peak. Uh, so if we um, bring up the help file for that, um, there are some uh, examples here. I'm just going to try and stick more or less with it with the help files, so that you, if you if you get these tools, then you'll be able to go back to what I've showed you. Uh, here that explains this explains all, all of the parameters and all that uh, you also have um, a mention of that ICMC paper if you need to go and see that uh, look at that so I'm just going to show you quickly the uh, um, breakdown of the process create a synth uh, this is monosynth a white noise with bumpers filter and some amplitude modulation uh, this is a synth for mixing everything down to stereo as unfortunately we're in stereo right now um, I generate an array of these synths. That's now eight synths in different channels. Uh, mix them down to uh, two channels. Uh, and now I generate uh, a frequency array here. So if I plot that, you will see what that looks like. There's a curve at uh, the third channel, no, one, two, like that. And I can then map that onto my synths, and I get uh, a peak of 6000 hertz slightly off to the left. Um, and then obviously, you can't exactly hear that contour, but it becomes more clear if you animate it. And if you change the values, you can hear um, if I change the curve um, and map that, you hear how it changes slightly. I'll move the peak. Um, uh, to the other end, you can hear that it moves to the other end, um, to the left, etc. etc. So, um, if I now uh, go into this example, I've uh, just used uh, some uh, graphic user tools to demonstrate. This is uh, imagining that we have a very large speaker array of 64 channels um, and we're trying to sort of pan a texture or move a texture across these channels. Um, so I'm going to increase the peak width to get a relatively smooth effect. If I move this now, minimum, that's minimum frequency. It's the same, there's no difference. Uh, but if I bring this up, uh, Sorry about that. Okay, so uh, if I bring up the uh, peak width, how many channels this peak is uh, covering, um, and then uh, bring up this vertical, and then I will increase the uh, uh, peak value of the frequency and the modulation. Uh, that's the uh, sort of the amplitude fluctuation on here so yeah that's right in the center now if I move that to the side it moves to the side it's a bit uh, sort of jittery here because the graphic tools don't work so well with this but if you map that to a knob or something it's completely smooth so you can hear the texture is is panning and you can also hear that it wraps around when I get here it starts to come back on this side as well so it's made to to work in a in a uh, in a sort of square or a circle or something um, so uh, I can just show you some uh, examples of the uh, pattern version of this as well um, <clears throat> so here uh, Obviously, I don't have time to explain what a pattern is now in Super Collider, but it's a convenient way of, of uh, generating, setting synthesis parameters over time, like automating um, uh, synthesis, synthesis parameters over time. Uh, and this, I'm doing a multi channel version of this. So I have, um, uh, in this case, an eight channel texture. So I have eight synths, and I'm generating uh, parameter settings with a, a 
p parapeak for multiple different uh, envelopes of multiple different parameters here so if i play that back you get a highly dynamic texture which is moving a lot in space but the actual outer sort of dimensions of texture remains fixed it's just the the um, properties of the texture that changes in different locations um, so um, uh, that's uh, a more kind of dynamic example of that how to how to use these peaks uh, if I look at parm curve we've uh, seen um, just briefly what the, a plot could look like minimum and a maximum value uh, however minimum and maximum does not necessarily need to be minimum and maximum is simply one end and the other, uh, so to speak. Um, so if we look at this here, uh, bring up the maximum. Now that's uh, on my right. Minimum is on my left. Could equally well be the other way around. If I adjust the curve, I can hear how it shifts. So you can hear that there are channels in between left and right, basically. So. This is a way of creating a kind of spatial interpolation between two different values uh, and using a curve to... So now if you control this continuously over time, you have a lot of scope for creating very uh, dynamic textures. Um, and I can show this with uh, the pattern version. Uh, here, for example, I have... Um, <coughs> A simple uh, sine tone oscillator with a, some feedback uh, distortion and uh, modulation on it. Um, apologies uh, if I just play that. Yeah, this is also again a very a texture that moves a lot. And this motion is uh, uh, entirely created by the parameter differences. Um, here's uh, another example with the uh, Gaussian uh, pulse train. So it's like a kind of pulsar synthesis. Uh, modulating uh, frequency uh, bandwidth and, and uh, sorry band pass cut frequency of bandwidth and delays over time uh, so I'm using also delays to create a kind of a temporal offset to to pan uh, not to pan but to bias the texture in different areas and finally, uh, I'm going to show you Param cells, uh, which is a bit more compl uh, complex. Um, <clears throat> you give it a minimum and maximum value between which it generates an array uh, at every iteration. So you instantiate this and then you iterate over this. And you can feed in a value which will be uh, put into one channel, which will affect the, um, the next. Uh, array basically but you don't have full control of it there's an error probability as well which introduces a little bit of kind of uh, sort of glitches in in the in the process um, and you can supply your own function for how the averaging between the neighbors is working um, so uh, if if I do the same thing here with um, synth uh, so my outputs, my array. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to create different phases um, for these sine tones, for these um, param cells. And here's an update function. Every time I run this function, I will generate a new array by these param cells of phases that I map onto the uh, this array of synths. Yeah, so. So you can hear that this is kind of like a spatially distributed sine tone 
that shifts in places. Um, and here's a texture where I'm simply generating frequencies in different channels. So it's not random because obviously they follow the input parameter that I give it, but uh, none of these frequencies is actually 2065 at this point. They're somewhere around there, uh, but it's not a simple stochastic deviation either. Um, and the walk means that if I go pos uh, above one, then it will be drawn towards the edges. Uh, if we go below one, it will be drawn to the center of the of the pyramid space. Uh, and I have uh, just a more interesting sounding example here. With it's also based on a sine tone, but it also has a, a, an envelope that creates a kind of grain modulation on the sine tone. Uh, and in this. Um, Every time I generate this, I get a different um, rate of pulses and actually different envelope, uh, different attack, micro time temporal difference of attack in each channel. So that creates the shift in the sort of image. So right now it's a shift in the stereo image, but of course if you put that in a multi-channel texture it will be a, a surround uh, texture that shifts um, in quite a subtle way, uh, but it's still uh, palpable. <clears throat> uh, finally, uh, I want to show you um, an example of uh, uh, of uh, a non-standard process that I've uh, used in some of my music. This is basically a process where I have uh, a synth that oscillates through uh, arrays of uh, amplitudes, durations and curves. So I supply this through the param cells. Uh, it's sort of related a little bit to uh, processes such as um, Synarchus' Gendin uh, synthesis uh, system where he was generating amplitudes and envelope um, uh, sorry um, envelope segments uh, from stochastic functions uh, so if I run this you can see here there's a scope of the different um, channels uh, and if I move this up now I generate I can I get different uh, durations, different uh, curves, and and here I'm just changing the amplitude. So essentially what you have there is a spatially distributed oscillator so uh, where you have a very sort of microtemporal uh, control of the spatial variation of the waveform in each channel um, um, and uh, uh, another p param cell is also doing uh, is, it gives you the ability to use this in a more sort of automated uh, fashion. So for example here we have uh, a process that generates uh, grains, a new grain in every channel at every iteration using uh, p-param cells uh, for frequency duration curve and uh, this is sort of a glisson synthesis, so the glissando properties. Um, And with that, 
uh, I think my demo is um, done. I um, guess I'm running out of time. Uh, if um, just to conclude, uh, the envelope things work best in higher density wave field style array. Indeed, there is a similarity between wave field synthesis and the way of working since I create these gradients over multiple loudspeakers. Uh, but generally, all of these classes are quite good with physical control, i.e., like map to to uh, knob or faders uh, interfaces. Combination of egocentric and distributed spatiality. Uh, these are some of the sources I uh, have cited, and that's the paper, the ICMC paper that's related that has a little bit more um, detail on this. Thank you very much for uh, tuning in and uh, watching this. Uh, and please feel free to contact me if you have any questions about this. Thank you.